What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics. And today, we got a fun top 10 list brought to us by our man and longtime patron supporter, Alan. We got the number ones in New Zealand by New Zealand artists. Uh, so before we jump into this one, if you will hit the big red subscribe button below, also give us a big thumbs up. And if you'd like us to react to a top 10 for you, an album reaction, song reaction, support us in any way, the patrons make this thing go, please check out the Patreon link below. Also check out our Facebook group, great music discussion every single day. And lastly, check out our Twitch link below. Give us a follow there. We have live streams every Wednesday afternoon and Friday night. So we're going to jump into this. I was pleased to find that I could find some, some research out there on every one of these. I only know one of these songs that was a big hit here in the States, but we're going to start this thing off with I Got You by Split Ends. Now I am familiar with Split Ends somewhat um, because I know I know the incarnations that came out of it. I know the Finn brothers. I know that sort of stuff, but I don't know this song. It uh, went to number one March 16th of 1980 off the True Colors album from the same year. Their most commercially successful uh, single was written by Neil Finn. At the 1980 Australian Countdown Australian Music Awards, the song won Best Single Record. In 2001, it was voted the 11th best New Zealand song of all time. So, wow, that is some high praise. So. Once again, thank you, Alan. And if you're joining us for the first time on these, the music will not be in the video, but there will be a link below if you want to follow along with me. If you just want to know what I think of the songs, just hang around because uh, I'll be right back and I'll also have the lyrics up on the screen. Let's get after this thing. I Got You by Split Ends. Wow, I really, really like the sound of this one. Uh, it's going to be hard. I got to make a little note here. It's going to be hard for this one not to end up. I picked three favorites at the end of this uh, this one's going to be difficult to knock out of that. I should have mentioned at the start, these are in chronological order, not in the order that Alan thinks is 10 through 1. They're just in chronological order, so this one was 1980, so it was the uh, oldest one. But it sounded like 1980 in an absolutely uh, fantastic way. Anthemic Chorus, I see here that Watch Mojo in, in 2017 named it the 6th uh, in their top 10 80 songs you forgot were awesome. I, I can see that. Never heard this one, obviously, but it appears to be about a guy. Uh, Neil is in love with her. Maybe a little bit obsessive. Um, you know, I got you and that's all I want. I won't forget. That's a whole lot. I don't go out. Not now that you're in. Sometimes we shout, but that's no problem. I don't know why sometimes I get frightened. You can see my eyes. You can tell that I'm not lying. So he doesn't really want to go anywhere. He just wants to stay there with her, which is good to an extent, right, ladies? But it can kind of turn into maybe a little bit on the creepy side. Uh, but something's wrong. I feel uneasy. You show me. Tell me you're not teasing. I don't know why sometimes I get frightened. You can see my eyes. You can tell that I'm not lying. And then uh, there's no doubt. Uh, oh, let's see. Where do you go? I get no answer. You're always out. It gets on my nerves. So, uh, you know, I don't know, Neil. Maybe you should relax a little bit. But, uh, you know, he's just panicked that he might lose her. But... Uh, Really, really enjoyed that one. And next up, as you can see now, I've been I've been dreading this because I don't want to mispronounce this, right? I always hate doing that. Uh, all respect to them. And, and when I did the research for this, I'm like, am I going to mess this up? But I'm going to go with Poi E by Patea Maori Club, March 18, 1984, off the Poi E album from 1982. Uh, this one, I know if you're in New Zealand, you're going to know this because it's got a lot of iconic stuff to it. Its popularity is unique in New Zealand as Maori music rarely reaches popular status. Released in 84, the song was sung entirely in the Maori language and featured a blend of Maori cultural practices in the song. It topped the New Zealand pop charts for four weeks and also became the biggest seller in New Zealand for the year of 1984. Today, the song maintains its status as a cult classic in non-Maori New Zealand as the group behind it, Patea Maori Club, was a one-hit wonder. But if you're going to be a one-hit wonder, make it iconic, right? However, for Maori, the song is much more important as it became, quote, the anthem of a new generation, the generation known as the hip-hop generation. Without radio play and barely any commercial TV airing, a TV news story is credited with shooting the song up to number one in New Zealand in March of 84. Its popularity that same year grew further when it was well received by British listeners as they toured the UK. In July of 2016, there was a film about this song and it premiered at the New Zealand International Film Festival. So obviously, uh, 
just huge, huge acclaim for this one. Looking forward to hearing it. Uh, I've got the lyrics up, as I say, for everything, but I've also got the translated lyrics up so I can kind of see what's going on. I have a feeling it's going to be more about just the vibe of it since it kind of uh, brought hip hop to the forefront. So let's check this one out. Just like I thought, just kind of like I suspected going in, very much an atmosphere type song. I mean, if you're listening to this going, how in the world is that the... Uh, the birth of hip hop a little bit in New Zealand. You gotta remember it's 1984, 1982 really when this thing was recorded. It's a different world, right? It doesn't sound like hip hop does now, but I can tell you from the States, you know, hip hop sounded different back in the day. So I've got the lyrics up, as I said, translate. Now it doesn't mean they're right. I mean, this is a good site that I'm using here, but it doesn't mean that they're right. So if you're, if you speak the language and you're watching this and I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but you know, basically it's a swing out rhythmically, my feelings lean out beside me so deceptively, swing round and down, spin towards me, just like a fantail and you know a, a little bit more spinning and then kind of the chorus part oh my feelings draw near oh my poie don't go astray oh my affections stick to me oh my instincts take care of me oh my emotions be entwined around me and you know the the percussion the traditional percussion and all of that good stuff so it's just I enjoyed it um it's just like I said an atmosphere song it's always a little interesting when you don't speak the language but a really good choice and with the history behind it, with my research, obviously it had to be on this list. Alan had to put it on here or they might deport him out of the country. So uh, great choice there. Let's go to the next track. It's number eight, but remember these aren't numerical either chronologically. You go with Slice of Heaven by Dave Dob Dobbin featuring, I'm gonna say herbs, it could be herbs, but October 5th, 1986. Soundtrack for Foot Trot Flats, The Dog's Tail from 1986, and also Dobbin's album uh, in 1988 called Loyal. It was number one on the New Zealand charts for eight weeks and in Australia for four weeks. Uh, Dave was writing in Sydney when he was given the opportunity to compose for the Foot Trot Flats film. He brought in herbs to sing in the background based on his childhood experiences of Pacific gospel choirs. The song incorporates a synthesized Japanese flute made with an emu emulator too. If you know anything about music, you'll know what that means. Uh, the song gained huge exposure in Australia through the Foot Trot Flats trailer being shown before the popular Crocodile Dundee film. It was huge here in the States too. I remember going to see it as a 15 year old leading to high radio play before the single had been released. It was awarded Best Song at the 1986 New Zealand Music Awards. It was voted number one in 2009 by C4 viewers as New Zealand's favorite song and is often considered an unofficial national anthem of New Zealand, especially after its usage in New Zealand tourism ads in the 80s and 90s. So just like the previous song that you know, there was a TV story on it and it exploded to popularity. This one was in a trailer before Crocodile Dundee, which I mean, as huge as it was here in America, I can imagine how huge it was over in that part of the world. And it just brings things to uh, to the forefront. You just need that little bitty thing to, to bring you to uh, fame and fortune. So Slice of Heaven, there you have a Slice of Heaven, Dave Dobbin. Totally sounds like something that could be in an animated film. The, the intro, the da, 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 ba, da, just rolling on and it comes on later on in the song and just some anthemic stuff, some upbeat, nice instrumentation, worked well with the little chorus part coming on. Basically, he's just saying that he loves her. He's got faith in her. She's his little slice of heaven that everything's great when he's around her and just makes you feel good as you're listening to the, to the song. You know, most animated songs that, you know, they're in the movie, animated movies are up-tempo, upbeat, you know, it kind of kind of plays along with the genre and, and this one fits perfectly into that. You know, hey, I got a lot of faith in you. I'll stick with you, kid. That's the bottom line. Yeah, we got a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun, don't we? And heaven has to be with you all the time. Her beauty when the mood gets you down, your bottom lips and you're dragging on the ground, that's when I gotta play the clown for you. Black humor made me kick my blues. Howdy angel, where'd you hide your wings? That sort of stuff is throughout this song. Enjoy this one, a real fun one. Now we're gonna get to the song that I know. And if you're, if you're in New Zealand or Australia, you're like, yeah, I bet this is the song. And there it is, man, don't dream it's over. Crowded House. We've done a whole album reaction to Crowded House. Done some stuff for Alan in this wheelhouse, but know this song quite well. It's one of those songs that absolutely sticks in your head and you want to just scream, hey now, hey now. So from April 19, 1987, it went to number one 
uh, from their self-titled 1986 debut album. Fourth single was written by frontman, yep, he's already appeared here before, Neil Finn. Went to number two in the U.S., became in the, becoming the band's biggest international hit. In May 2001, the Australian Performing Rights Association celebrated its 75th anniversary by naming the best New Zealand and best Australian songs of all time, uh, ranked by a panel. This was the number two on the New Zealand list and number seven on the Australian list. High, high praise. Obviously, I know this song quite well. I haven't heard it in forever. Really looking forward to it. Don't dream it's over. Don't dream it's over. Crowded house. Uh, like I said, I know this tune. I love this. I wanted to start belting it out, but I wanted to save you from it if you're watching live along with me. Uh, just a fantastic song. I mentioned it during the, the reaction, but the instrumental break, both between the second and third verse and also towards the end, you know, it's either an organ or a synth set to sound like an organ. We did a lot of that back in the 80s. We did a lot of stuff with synths back in the 80s, but a nice little uh, kind of change of pace for this song. Enjoyed that part of it. And, you know, the lyrics, there's a little amb ambiguity to it say that word 10 times, right? Uh, you know, he's basically telling her, I think, that the world is trying to come between them, but don't let them. You know, hey now, hey now, don't dream it's over. Hey now, hey now, when the world comes in, they come, they come to build a wall between us. We know they won't win. Um, could be a theme for 2020 in the United States, but that's a whole nother story. Uh, so, he tells her in the first verse, you'll never see the end of the road while you're traveling with me. Hits that great chorus. Now I'm towing my car. There's a hole in the roof. So that's kind of funny. I mean, is he towing his car because there's a hole in the roof? Because it's still drivable. Is it just beat down? But uh, my possessions are causing me suspicion, but there's no proof. In the paper today, tales of war and of waste, but you turn right over to the TV page. In other words, just ignoring what's going on in the world, which sometimes isn't a bad theory. You can't get caught up too much in it. You got to know what's going on, but you can't get caught up too much into it because it will affect your whole life and a lot of those things you don't have any control over. So just a fantastic tune. Going to be hard to, to knock that out of my, uh, my top three at the end. But now we're up to the sixth song and that one's going to be, drum roll please, Nobody Else. This one is by Tex Pistol and Ricky Morris. From October 9th, 1988, it went to number one in New Zealand. From the Nobody Else uh, album in 1988, New Zealand musician brothers Tex Pistol, who's Ian Morris, and Ricky Morris. After Tex Pistol had a number one single in 1987 with The Game of Love, Pagan Records head Trevor Rieke convinced Ian to release Nobody Else as the follow-up single. It was a romantic ballad written and sung by Morris's younger brother, Ricky. At the 1988 New Zealand Music Awards, was nominated for Single of the Year, with Ian also nominated for Producer of the Year for the same song, while Ricky won Songwriter of the Year. So let's get after this one. Nobody Else, Tex Pistol, Ricky Morris. Nobody Else by Tex Pistol and Ricky Morris. This is pop sugar turned up to 110. This stuff was so popular, not this song in particular, but this formula uh, in the States from like probably 86 to 88, maybe late 85 to 88. I could see this song if it was popular in the States being played at every prom. I don't know if they have proms in New Zealand, but just school events uh, that, that we have for juniors and seniors, a dance. I could see this being played. I could see it being played at weddings and everybody dancing together. The chorus had that just great anthemic, love you so much aspect to it. It did have a nice horn solo in there and did pump up the guitar a little bit at the end. It just is what it is, right? It's a, it's a love theme. You gotta have those things. It's not necessarily my thing, but I'm, I could see why it works so well. It's very well done. So, you know, I, I see why it's on this list and I see why it was so popular. That's gonna take us to Trippin' by Push Push. It went to number one. We're gonna jump all the way to April 14th, 1991. Great album title, A Trillion Shades of Happy from 1992. The only album they ever released. It was their debut single, went to number one in New Zealand for six weeks, peaked at 25 in Australia. So my question is, it went to number one, it was their debut single. Whatever happened to Push Push? Why is there only one song? Somebody tell me. This is a song. I've got to put everything, guys, I'm from the States. This could have come out in 1986. 15-year-old Sean would have absolutely been jamming to this. I don't know what Push Push looks like. I could have looked it up on Google, obviously. I'm, I'm imagining this hairband, 
rocking out. So 1991 would have fit in 1986 in the U.S. perfectly, and I would have been jamming to this thing. It was more about the instrumentation, the style. It's not really about the lyrics. I mean, he's just talking about, I wasn't thinking, wasn't looking till I met you. Wasn't looking for love, but he found it. I had no reason. I was out of season when I met you. And then, you know, that I was tripping out on you. And nice little instrumental breakdown that you got to have in these types of songs. Started out with a little bit of bass, slamming that guitar. And then he just went all in at the end. So a fun song. Definitely enjoyed that one. That is going to take us to our next track, which is the only one that's actually not on Spotify. Come on, Spotify. Get after it. So I'm going to pull it over from YouTube. Just the audio, but you won't have the Spotify a song up on there. It is Chains by DLT featuring Che Fu. Came, went to number one on August 4th, 1996 from the True School LP in 1996 and To Be South Pacific 1998. It was Che Fu's first song after leaving Super Groove and marked the beginning of his solo career. He had been asked to feature on the song before his departure from Super Groove. He came to the recording unaware that he needed to write a chorus as well as a verse and came up with a memorable hook, Come Break My Chains, Come Help Me Out, Living in the City Ain't So Bad, On the Spot, Always Impressive. Sometimes pressure will bring out the best in us, huh? Debuted on the New Zealand charts at number two, then rose to one where it remained for five weeks. At the 1997 New Zealand Music Awards won Best Single, Che Fu was awarded Best Male Vocalist for the song. In 2001, it was named as the 21st Best New Zealand Song of All Time, Chains by DLT featuring Che Fu. Chains by DLT featuring Che Fu. Almost a little bit of a style if you're familiar, if you know Shaggy, almost that reggae, almost hip hop you know, spitting wine style. I definitely think the highlight of the song was that Come Break My Chains, Come Help Me Out, Living in the City, Ain't So Bad. Just really like that kind of difference coming into the song, change up a little bit. I'm not really sure what it's about. I mean, you know, when, you're, when lyrics are just being spit, you, you've got to kind of try to really take it in, in in one shot. It's pretty difficult, but he's just speaking out, I think, against any sort of racism, any sort of hate against him. And of course, he's got to bring in the girl talk about her a little bit and you know I like he, he puts a little bit of Americanism in here uh, she's a star ski to my hutch the 70s famous early 70s TV series and Ken and Barbie burn crispy pink with a plastic sheen turn it over baste it with a bit of margarine mm, smells good the swine tastes fine where's my Christmas pud so pudding so those kind of things like some of these lyrics I don't know man but it all works together in the vibe of it so I enjoyed it I can see why it was such a big hit that's going to take us we're already to number three and once again just a reminder these are not ranked in top 10 they're just chronological order but we have not many by scribe Went to number one August 27, 2003 from the Crusader album in 2003. Scribe's debut was written by Scribe and P. Money. According to P. Money, it was recorded and mixed in less than six hours. Spent 12 weeks at number one in New Zealand and became the top single of 2003. During its run at number one, the Crusader album was released and debuted at number one on the New Zealand albums charts. This was the first time in the chart's histories that a New Zealand artist simultaneously topped the singles and albums chart. That's amazing, honestly. Won the 2004 Silver Scroll and Award for Songwriting. In 2010, the list of the top 10 New Zealand singles of the 2000s was compiled. It was the third best-selling single of the decade. Let's get after it. Not many by Scribe. Not many by Scribe. Really enjoyed that one. 2003 hip-hop, whether it was in New Zealand or whether it was in the States, appears to be very much the same. That is the style. I was into hip-hop big time back at that point in my life. He starts out with a little intro, throws a shout-out to Welcome to the Crusader to his album. Love it. has been a long time coming. The chorus, very good. How many dudes you know roll like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? Not many, if any. How many dudes you know got the skills to go and rock a show like this? Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't know anybody. And then he just starts spitting stuff out. The first verse had a part in there where he sounds so much like Eminem on the track, Forgot About Dre. I mean, he sounds just like him for about eight lines in there. I don't know if that was intentional or not, or just the style of the time, but I definitely heard some Marshall Mathers influence in there. The pre-chorus, 
is, is pretty good. There's check it out, no, check it out, one, check it out, like me. And then he goes into the, the course again. It all builds up and spits those lines just at an insane rate. A lot of talent on this guy. Really did enjoy this one. It might, it just might end up on my favorites. We're already to the second one on the list. What do we got? We got Freaks, the radio edit. From November 17, 2014, just a single, not on an album that I could find at least. It's a song by Australian DJ, producer, musician, Timmy Trumpet, and New Zealand rapper Savage. Top three hit in Australia, charted in other countries such as France, Belgium, Hungary, Sweden, Poland, and the Netherlands. It's the highest selling single of all time on Ministry of Sound Australia and won highest selling single at the 2015 New Zealand Music Awards. It's only two minutes, 49 seconds. That is quite a bit of acclaim and sales. Let's check it out. Let's check out the Freaks, boys and girls. Well, there you have it. Freaks, Timmy Trumpet featuring Savage. Exactly what you think it would be in a song like this. It's just, it's a party anthem. I can see the more you hear it, the more it sticks in your head. Starts out with Savage in the rap section. He's got that deep voice, just spitting out the bass and the tweeters, make the speakers go to war. Ah, the mighty trumpet brings the freaks out to the floor. You know what this is, it's a party anthem. Get out, I said during the reaction, I felt like I should turn the lights down, bring me a smoke machine in here. I'm at the club. Timmy Trumpet comes in on the chorus, tell me, tell me where the freak's at. Kind of goes on with that. Then Savage has a long verse too. It's really the only place where there's a ton of lyrics. Spit some stuff out. We got the speakers pumping Timmy Trumpet for the women with curves. Got that freak flow, freak show. Welcome to the circus. Let the leaders lead. Preachers preach. Welcome to the service. Just a fun song. I, I really enjoy it. does have the trumpet solo in there. You got to have that with Timmy Trumpet. I'm assuming, don't know anything about him, but I'm assuming that's, uh, that's going to be his calling card with that name. And now we're to the most recent entry. And if you know anything about New Zealand music, I'm sure you, you figured this young lady was going to make an appearance on here. And this is her appearance. Green Light by Lord. Now I gotta tell you, I know who Lord is. I'm an old guy, but I know who Lord is. But I did not know, I'm sorry guys and girls in New Zealand. I didn't know she was from New Zealand. So I would say by far right now, the most popular export you have. And maybe there was someone who wasn't on this list by Alan that's super popular, but I knew Crowded House, knew the Finn Brothers, probably just because of Alan and some stuff he's brought to us, but a lot of people know Lord, obviously worldwide famous. This came out in March 13th, or this was number one March 13th of 2017, off the Melodrama album of 2017. Lead single, only went to 19 in the US, but it does have a, a weird distinction. It jumped from number 100, where it debuted on the, on the Hot 100 US charts, to number 19, so an 81 spot jump, ties for the largest jump in American chart history. I mean, obviously some songs have debuted higher than that, but to jump that high uh, with several other songs, so that was pretty cool. This is her second album, written and produced by Ward and Jack Antonoff, who works with a lot of artists, with additional writing by Joe Little and production assistance from Frank Dukes. The lyrics use a, quote, green light as a street signal metaphor that gives Ward permission to move on into the future, earned that Silver Scroll Award that I mentioned earlier and appeared on various year-end and decade-end lists. Lord said this about the song. The song is really about those moments, kind of immediately after your life changes, and about all the silly little things that you gravitate towards. It sounds so happy, and then the lyrics are so intense, obviously. So we enjoy those types of songs at the channel where if you're not really paying attention, you're vibing along to the music, oh, this is great, it's up-tempo, it's upbeat, but then you look at the lyrics and I'm like, wow. That isn't really a, what it's about at all. So let's jump into Lord, Green Light, then I'll talk about the list and my three favorites. Green Light by Ward, the newest entry on Alan's list, not the number one, just the last entry, but for me, it could have been the number one because this song was fantastic. Yes, the old guy loved that song, and I definitely see what I talked about at the beginning. You've got the upbeat, great instrumentation, even a little breakdown of the piano on parts of it, which love that, and then kind of get up into that dance, upbeat stuff. Choruses, anthemic almost coming in there. But the message was this guy messed her over, man. Left her, probably cheated on her. Well, that refrain, well, those great whites, they have big teeth, hope they bite you. Thought you said that you would always be in love, but you're not in love no more. Did it frighten you how we kissed when we danced on the light up floor, on the light up floor? So 
she's she's taking shots at him um, in the first verse. I know what you did, and I want to scream the truth. She thinks she loved the beach. She's she's somewhere. He's somewhere with another girl, and she sees him. You're such a damn liar, and then liar, 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 liar. I mean, this one was this one was fire. I, I need to check out this whole album. I have a feeling. I know. Trey, my son, who we do this channel together, if you're brand new here, usually we're on videos together. Uh, he really likes Lord a lot, has, speaks highly of her. So that, that one was fantastic. So now we're to the part where we, I'm going to pick my three favorite tracks. I will say, Great West put together Alan from a variety of decades. This has to be very difficult to do, to, to try to bring in 10 songs, number one songs in New Zealand by New Zealand artists. You had a ton of stuff to choose from, I'm sure. So I think you did a great job bringing in various styles. My faves are going to be, and I said it at the start, I Got You by Split Ends all the way back from 1980. Just love Neil Finn and the sound. On that on that note, go to Don't Dream It's Over by Crowded House. Kind of a cheat, because I know that song. And when you know a song, it's hard for it not to stick out as a favorite. And I'm going to go Honorable Mention Trippin' by Push Push, just for what it is. You know, brings me back to the yesteryear of hair bands, which I actually liked. And Not Many by Scribe. Thought that was pretty darn good, 2003 hip-hop. Those are my honorable mentions. And my other favorite, of course, Green Light by Ward. My favorite song on this list. So the Finns and Ward rule it for me. Once again, thank you, Alan. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you're in New Zealand, or even if you're not, let me know your favorite New Zealand tunes, your favorite New Zealand artist. Who am I missing out on? Who did you wish could have been on this list if it was 15 or 20 songs? So once again, thanks for joining me. I will see you soon.